What's going on everybody? Ryan's Baseball Roundup here and in today's video I'm going to be telling you one player from every team who I think should be traded by the trade deadline which is on either July 31st or August 1st. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the like button if you enjoy these type of videos. Let's get straight into the video. Okay so starting off with the Mets, my player for them is Dom Smith. I think D Dom Smith could benefit from a change of scenery because he's shown in the past that he can play well even though he didn't play well, well this year so he got sent down to AAA. But he, he's shown in the past, like in 2020, he was batting over 300 and he, he was playing well, very well for them. That he can be a productive hitter. Um, he still hit, can hit left-hand pitching. At minimum, I think he could be a bench bat for an MLB team. For the Braves, I think they should trade Adam Duvall. Because ever since Michael Harris, has their, one of their top prospects, has come up to the major leagues with Acuna, um, they've been really good. Uh, they have Eddie Rosario coming back. Adam Duvall struggled this year. Um, he's getting older. I think he might just be regressing. So they, they already have Acuna, Eddie Rosario, M Michael Harris. Um, I, I think they should trade him. For the Phillies, it's Mickey Moniak. He was the first round pick um, back in 2015. And he just has never really lived up to the hype. This year he's batting like 125 or something in a small sample size. He gets injured a lot. Um, I think there would be a rebuilding team who would want to take a flyer on him, uh, take a chance on him, um, and they would be able to put him and give him more regular playing time. So on the Phillies, with that big media market and their big expectations to make the playoffs finally, I think it's just too much pressure on him. For the Marlins, I said Jesus Aguilar, because Garrett Cooper's having a really good year for them. He's been playing DH. I think they could get something for a big bat like Jesus Aguilar, because... There's a lot of teams who could use like a, a good DH, and he would be a good DH. He's been a good DH throughout his career. And then once they Marlins trade him, they could move Garrett Cooper over from DH back to first, which is where he probably should be playing. For the Nationals, it's Nelson Cruz. Um, he's on a one-year deal. A lot of teams could use a DH in the middle of that lineup, and Nelson Cruz would provide that. He's always been a good power hitter. He kills left-handed pitching. The Nationals aren't contending anytime soon. He's been picking it up as of late. At the start of the year, he had a cold start, but now he's picking it up. For the Cardinals, I said Jordan Hicks. Jordan Hicks, he has really good stuff. He throws like 103 miles per hour. We've seen flashes of it. Back when he was a reliever, he was really good. And then he had a lot of injuries. And this year, he's been injured for, for a lot of it, and he just hasn't been playing overall to what we know he can be. He has like a 5 ERA. I think him being on a different team with more opportunity, with less pressure could be beneficial to him. For the Brewers, I said Eric Lauer, which is probably surprising because he's been pitching pretty good for them, but I mean, they haven't really had any good prediction from any of their hitters. Like, none of their hitters have above an 800 OPS, so they're going to need to take one of their good pitchers because they have a lot of good pitching. We got Corbin Burns, Freddie Peralta, Brandon Woodruff, even though Freddie Peralta and Brandon Woodruff have been on the injured list, they're going to have to take one of their good pitchers and turn it into hitters because right now they, they can't hit anything. None of their hitters have been producing. So I think that one of, it's either going to be Aaron Ashby or Eric Lauer that they need to trade to flip into a good hitter. And for me, I think Eric Lauer is more realistic because Aaron Ashby is younger and he has um, more, more less service time, so he has more years on his contract. So I think they need to take Eric Lauer and flip him into a hitter. For the Pirates, they don't really have too many good players, but I think Jose Quintana, they should definitely trade. He's having the best year in a while for him, pretty much since he was on like his first year on the Cubs. I think there's definitely some contending teams that could use left-handed pitching. A team could definitely use him. And since he's on the older side, like around 32, um, a team wouldn't really have to give up that much to get him. I think right now he has around a 3 ERA. That would be a good pickup for like a team like you know the Dodgers because you know Walker Buehler's been injured. So next I got... For the Cubs, I got Wilson Contreras. Wilson Contreras is definitely one of the more bigger star names that I think should be traded. But um, a lot of teams could use a good catcher. He's having one of the better years of his career. He's hitting for a lot of power. He's probably going to be the starting catcher in the All-Star game for the Cubs. He's batting 268 with 11 or 12 home runs. Um, there's a lot of teams that could use a good catcher. The Giants could use one, the Astros. It's like a lot of teams need a catching, and he would be really good. The Cubs could get a lot back from him because it would take a lot of prospects to get him dealt. 
So I like Wilson Contreras for the Cubs to get traded. On the Reds, um, it's definitely either Luis Castillo or Tyler Molly. I said Tyler Molly. He's been doing really good his last couple of starts. His ERA isn't really indicative of how he's been pitching the last couple of starts because he pitched really bad towards the beginning half of the season. So he still has around like a 4.6 ERA or so. But his last start out, he threw nine shutout innings and got 12 strikeouts, and he somehow still didn't get the win. But I said Tyler Molly would get be more likely to get traded for the Reds than Luis Castillo, just because Tyler Molly would he wouldn't have to get as, up as many prospects for um him. I think a team like the Mets, who have had a lot of injured guys, could use him. The Giants, you know, the Dodgers. Um, there's a lot of teams who are probably going to be interested in him at the deadline. So I think he should be traded by the Reds. And Will Myers for the Padres. Um, this is just strictly because I think the, it, it would be nice for the Padres to get off his contract. He has like a six-year, $85 million contract, and he showed over the last couple of years that he's not worth that much. And the Padres have shown that they're trying to get rid of like their bigger contracts. In the offseason, they were trying to get rid of Eric Hosmer to the Mets, but that fell through. So I think that they would like to probably get rid of him um, just to get off his salary. Dodgers, I said David Price. David Price came over in the Mookie Betts trip as pretty much salary cap filler. They're paying him like $35 million. I think a team would be willing to take on that contract um, if the Dodgers paid most of it. He's still not bad. He's just not what he used to be. He has like a 4 ERA. Because I also don't think he likes his role. He's used to being more of a starter, but pretty much the whole time on the Dodgers, he's been like a bullpen type of guy. As for the Giants, I said Joey Bart. Joey Bart has just been really bad. At the start of this year, he was playing good like the first couple of weeks, but he's been striking out at an insane rate. I mean, he they're trying to replace Buster Posey with him, but he wasn't even like close to Buster Posey. I think he was striking out like 40% of the time. Um, I think the Giants should try to trade him while he still has at least some value. They sent him down to AAA to work on his hitting. I think they should they could still get something from him. Because so like I said, there's a lot of teams who um, are rebuilding. So I think there would be like one of those younger teams who would be willing to take a chance on a guy like Joey Bart. Next, for the Diamondbacks, I said Madison Baumgartner. Madison Baumgartner is probably having one of the better years of his career since he signed with the Diamondbacks. I'm having his best year since like 2019. His ERA is at like 3.5. Um, and a lot of teams could use left-handed pitching contending teams. Um... Plus, a lot of teams would want him just because of his playoff pedigree. With the Giants, he was great in the playoffs. 2014, he won World Series MVP. He's a veteran pitcher, great playoff pedigree, has had a good year this year. It, it just makes sense for Madison Bumgarner to get traded at the deadline. Next team, Daniel Bard for the Rockies. He's an older reliever. He's not that expensive. So I think the Rockies would, in a heartbeat, trade him to a contending team for some prospects because they're not really close to contending anyways right now. The Yankees, I said Miguel Andujar. They didn't really have anyone who I could see them trading besides him. Um, he requested a trade like a couple weeks ago. They sent him down. Um, I think that, that they should trade him. He didn't really play bad this year. He's playing better than he has before. He's just not getting much opportunity. He's like bouncing up and down between AAA and the Yankees. There's definitely a team, like some teams that I think he could have opportunity on. I don't know if he would be like 2018, like rookie type Miguel Andujar, but he's still shown some potential. For the Blue Jays, I said Danny Jansen, mainly because Alejandro Kirk, their starting catcher, has been raking. They called up Gabriel Moreno, one of their top prospects, who I think he's going to be good for a while. So the, I see those as their two catchers. Danny Jansen was playing pretty solid. Um, he was their backup catcher up until he got hurt. So I think the other teams could use catchers because... Good catchers are hard to come by, and he's at least like average to above average for a catcher. For the Rays, I said Kevin Kiermeyer. I don't necessarily see this one happening, but there's a lot of teams that could use like a Gold Glove caliber um, defensive center fielder. I think like the Phillies, like they've had really bad defense this year. Like Kyle Schwarber and left isn't good defensively. Castellanos and right. Um, I think Kevin Kiermeyer would be a great fit on their team. So I think that he could get traded just because of his defense, because obviously he's not much on offense. He's like a below average hitter on offense. For the Red Sox, I said Jake Diekman. He's a veteran lefty arm out of the pen. He has always been pretty nasty. He gets a lot of strikeouts. He's having a solid year this year, 3 ERA. If you wanted to go like even more like surprising or like a hot take for the Red Sox, you could do Xander Bogarts. I don't necessarily see him trading, but there's been rumors of him getting traded. 
but it would take a lot to move Xander Bogarts because this man has been raking for like the last five years. He's hitting like 300 this year with around 800 OPS, so it would take a lot for him to get traded. For the Orioles, I got Trey Mancini. Uh, I just don't think Trey Mancini's been playing good this year, but I don't really think he fits the timeline of what they're looking for because most of their young guys who are going to become like good in the future, like Adley Rushman, Colton Kazer, Heston Kier said, those guys are like in their early 20s, um, whereas Trey Mancini is like 30. He's a free agent at the end of the year. I think they should just try to get something for him. So I don't know if he would necessarily resign. Plus, there's a lot of teams that could use the type of good hitter he is. Um, and then they can move Ryan Mountcastle to first once they trade him because he's been splitting time with first and DHing with, with Mountcastle. For the Twins, there wasn't too many options. But I said Royce Lewis because he's torn his ACL for the second time. I think at this point, they should just lock up Carlos Correa for a long contract so they don't have to worry about that and then trade Royce Lewis because Royce Lewis is a shortstop. So if you already got Correa, why do you need Royce Lewis? And he's already shown how injury prone he is. I think there's still some teams who would be interested just because of the top prospect he's been for the last couple of years. Even coming off of another major ACL injury, there's still teams that would um, want to take a chance on him. For the Guardians, I said Fran Mil Reyes. This is just... I don't think Fran Mil Reyes is a bad player. I don't think he's like washed or anything like that. It's just... Um, he's been injured pretty much the whole season, and the Guardians have been doing fine without him. Um, they've, their outfielders have been getting the job done, whether it's Miles Straw, Stephen Kwan, um, Oscar Mercado. Those guys have been getting it done for them. I think the like they need more help on like the infield and the back end of the bullpen. So their young guys have been getting it done. So if they're have, they're even above 500 without right now without. Um, Fran Mel Reyes having played too many games, so I think if they can they can flip him, he, he's always going to be a good power hitter. Um, there's a lot of teams that could use good power hitters who are contending. For the White Sox, I said Gavin Sheets. He he got sent down to AAA. And I think he's too good to be in AAA for them. So if he's not getting that sort of opportunity or playing time, they should move him somewhere else. He's been a good power for them. He was having a down year. I think last year as a rookie, he had like 250 with 14 home runs. Um, and like a 108 OPS plus. So I think he can like replicate that um, if he gets traded with a different team. He just needs more consistent playing time because that White Sox infield is pretty crowded. For the Tigers, I said Andrew Chafin. Uh, um, bullpen help is always needed. Like, well, There's not really any team who can be like, oh yeah, we're good on a, like, a good lefty out of the pen. He's a veteran. He's having another good year this year, like a 3-4 ERA. Um, he's not really on a big contract. I think he's a free agent after the end of the year. So you're not going to have to give up much prospects-wise. The Tigers aren't contending this year. Um, Whit Merrifield, everyone's been waiting for this to happen the last couple of years. Whit Merrifield's been on the Royals his whole career. He, he's a good speed guy. He hits for average. He had a slow start this year, but he's really been picking up like the last two or three weeks. So, yeah, I think Whit Merrifield should get traded. Archie Bradley, um, Archie Bradley has struggled this year with the Angels, but he's been good in the past, so I think there's definitely some teams who could use a guy like that out of their bullpen. For the Mariners, I said Kyle Lewis. The Mariners' outfield is so crowded that they need to trade at least one of them because they've already got Jesse Winker and Julio Rodriguez. they got Taylor Trammell, Kyle Lewis, Jared Kalnick. One of them is not going to have to go because they're not all going to fit in their outfield. I think they're going to keep Jesse Winker for the long haul. They've got an extension with him done today. Julio Rodriguez is, is amazing. He's been really good with them as a rookie, getting a lot of steals, picking it up lately. Um, so once you narrow it down, it's either like Taylor Trammell or Kyle Lewis that they're going to trade. Um, Taylor Trammell has been playing more regularly, so I just said Kyle Lewis. Kyle Lewis is still a good player. He was the 2020 Rookie of the Year for the American League, but he's just had a lot of injuries the past couple of years. For the A's, this one was pretty easy. Frankie Montas. Starting pitching is a premium. There's not too many starting pitching arms who are like on the market as available. You know, you got Tyler Molly, Luis Castillo. Frankie Montes is right there as like one of the best arms who's available in the starting pitching market. The A's would be um, dumb to not trade him at the trade deadline. He's got nasty stuff. He's pretty consistent. Like, you know what you're getting from him. He's going to be around like a 3-5, three, 3 ERA type of guy. And you're going to have to give up like a decent amount for him. You're going to have to give more prospects than you would if you were trading for Tyler Molly, but less than you would if you were trading for Luis Castillo. For the Rangers, I said Martin Perez, having up and down years, but this year he's been having, without a doubt, the best year of his career, 
with the Rangers. Um, he's a free agent at the end of the year. Um, I think he's a lefty um, arm, which I think would be really useful in a lot of teams' rotations. I don't know if like he's going to be able to maintain what he's ha doing for the first half of the year. So I think that the Rangers, if they can find a trade partner for him, and he's definitely going to make the All-Star team. It would be the first All-Star game of his career. So I think um, that would be he could get traded at the deadline. Um, for the Astros, there wasn't really any, anyone in particular. So I decided to let Ms. Diaz because he hasn't really been getting too many at-bats for them. And he showed earlier in his career on the Cardinals that he can be an everyday type of guy. So I think like, you know, maybe they trade him so he can get more regular at-bats somewhere else. So those are the players who I think should be traded before or at the trade deadline. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the like button if you enjoy these type of videos. I'm Baron Baseball Roundup, and I'm out. Peace.